Hello Toby, hello everyone. I'm John Turner and I am an artist and illustrator based in Manchester. The story that I've chosen for you this week is one that's very dear to my heart. It is Battlefield. Welcome folks, uh, it's episode two of Battlefield. In between episode one, I've changed the camera angle slightly because one camera's angle was not terribly flattering. Uh, and the other camera's angle, well, that was flattering, I suppose, because you can't be unflattering when the only part of somebody you capture is their elbow. Oh, I, I had a sneak, I kept looking at it and go, I'm, I'm not sure you can be seen with that. Um, and I, I mean, I check everything before I start. Best laid plans. It's very hard <laughs> making, uh, I was going to say making hard, <laughs> making television. This isn't even television. Um, which is why, again, you know, things like the, the boom scene in episode one that didn't quite work. You could tell what they were aiming for and you could tell what they were trying to do. And it is hard making, just making stuff coherent is hard. And takes a lot of attention to detail in every single shot. I just take my hat off to anybody that makes uh, television that even makes sense, that even gets to the end. Right, we're gonna start at the beginning. My friend John Turner has chosen Battlefield. We're gonna choose, we're gonna go with Episode two, press play now. I don't know how many times I press play that. Now, I've got my pen and paper because uh, I didn't write down anything last time. Because I'm so adult, unlike the fresh faced 15 year old who watched this when it first went out. Oh, there's a lot of water under the bridge. Um, I do like the TARDIS in the bubble. Um, this was, I mean, this was the most sophisticated thing ever when I was a kid, this TARDIS signal when it first began, but maybe talk about that when we do Time and the Rani. Oh, there'll be a lot to talk about when we talk about Time and the Rani. Um, Battlefield, Ben Aronovich, of course, had written Remembrance of the Daleks, which everyone had loved. I was quite... I love Marcus Gilbert. He n totally nails it. He's got that real convincing night acting thing going on, which takes a certain quality of actor, and he's got it. Um, and as I say, he was because he was in the. Um, he he did shortly after this. He did Riders, which was a sort of um, with Michael Prade from Robin of Sherwood, a kind of. Um, it was a Jimmy Cooper thing, wasn't it? Um, you know, bottoms and posh people shagging, basically. Um, Christopher Bone had done a bottom thing prior to this, so this is sandwiched between two handsome men's bottoms uh, in terms of their TV career. Um, but as I say, Marcus Gilbert was then around because he was in the third um, Army of Darkness, the Eve third Evil Dead film, playing a sort of knight. Um, and then he was in the Gold Blend advert. He was the sort of... The, the second generation of Anthony Anthony Head, uh, so you know I I I, I love the fact that I because I didn't know Marcus Gilbert at all prior to this, and I don't think he was mentioned in the 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 publicity material all that much, which is a shame because he's great. He's got that slightly sort of bite that whispered shiver, you know. He, he's chivalric, but he's got that. You could he's a fighter as well, but he. Yeah. He, he, oh. And Merlin as the Doctor. Now, I, I mean, I'd seen Excalibur, but I was largely distracted. That's got lots of bottoms in it too. Um, it's a very bottomy podcast. Um, <laughs> I do like the way Sylvester McCoy says that. I don't know if it's the effect he's going for, but more um, Anselin's there going. Remember Baden and his mighty arts. He's being very serious about it, and then, and then the doctor says it as if, as if he's saying, "Yeah, yeah and I've got, a, I've got a nice over." Um, he's, he's sort of, he he, 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 but he does it in a sort of doctorish way, which, which it, it sort of undermines all the, um, all, all this sort of medieval posturing, the, the way he sort of talks about mighty arts as, a, as, as if they're. Just a th his thing he's got in his bag. Um, oh, I, I, yes, I must try and get to grips with Xiao Yun 
Um, well, I seem to recall it just doesn't do all that much. But again, ah, we'll come to her later. I love Flight Lieutenant Lavelle. Uh, I had the privilege of interviewing Dorota Ray, who sadly uh, died a couple of years ago. I was really shocked by that. She was a very stunning woman. Uh, and of course, you, you don't really see, you, you do see her long hair when she, in, the, in the next episode. But uh, yeah, she was. Uh, this, is, this is so woke! Uh, which I'm, I'm, as, a, as, a, as a good thing. I'm, now I'm a bit curmudgeonly about some, some things from the modern era, so I'm, I don't know if I would be counted as woke by some. I, th I, I just want everybody to be happy. But I. I and it's interesting, and actually, you don't you don't know. You, it's only when you look back and think, did we think that? Did those things that that progress is all about doing things that seem heretical? Uh, and, and I and, it, and it's and I think even now. Well, in fact, I talked about it when when I did turn left. The idea of a of a female black officer was enough to get people, you know, calling it all sorts of names after the sun. Well, this is. You know, twenty years prior to that, um, so should be applauded. And I, I like the look of these scenes with the with the with the light and the crystal balls and uh, all all of that sort of nighty stuff is good. I, I, I seem to recall his his laughs aren't in sync later on, which spoils it. Which same because he looks great, Christopher Bowen, with the with the long sort of greasy hair is the wrong word, wet, wet hair and the stubble, and he looks. You know, it's a great. Great look, all of that. Um, I do like the fact that these two have had a big old fight. Um, <laughs> he's so charming. Uh, if I was a lady, I would fall for Anselin. Um, oh, this is, yeah, this is a good scene. With, um, and the lights go down, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I love all of this stuff, this stuff. I mean, it's, it's just, you know, it's not, not plot or anything. It's just to get you all excited. And, um, you know, you wonder, well, I was going to say, you wonder where the light's from. No, you don't. It's from the lightning. That's fine. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't get much CSO in those days. Uh, what was I talking about? Uh, oh yeah, being being woke. No, it's being it's being progressive, and and again you have lots of diff different nationalities. Uh, uh, you know, okay, some it might be lip service or nods uh, to progressiveness, but that's right. Sometimes a uh, a nod is better than no acknowledgement at all. Um, that that was a great shot of Lavelle in the Brigadier, and him asleep, and her being amused. There's a lot of lovely interplay between the two of them. That is. That is, I think, above and beyond the call of duty for what they have to contribute to the story. Um, I love all, I love all of this, and I like this, I like this piece of music. I like, I love this lighting. Um, but poor old Christopher. If I mean, say to any actor, just stand there, like, and bring his eyes open here, don't they? Yeah, that's great. This is all great, and it's dark, and it's night time. Night time is not in Doctor Who as often as we think it should be oh night has fallen here don't they have that yeah I mean poor Christopher Bowen what why are you laughing uh, and you bet he's got oh please, can I stop no, no need a bit more just got to do a quick a quick pan in on to you what am I laughing at you're just you're bad you're a baddie who's happy oh okay, all right love you don't tell the kids to watch Doctor Who I get to I have to do a really stupid bit <laughs> Quite like the Doctor Who set in a pub as well. That was on the trailer. If not the trailer, the coming coming soon tonight. Because it takes a He's still blooming going, isn't he? He's uh, and I, I, I and they've had to they've had to dub him on afterwards. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, mate. Well, I mean, I, I'm not criticising you. I was. I, I I don't think you should. He's, he's very handsome too, isn't he? He looks great. Um, That's a brilliant 
shot, the, the, the doctor going out of focus and, and Ansel in with all his gravitas uh, rising up behind him. I love that shot. Um, that's Jean Marsh off of, off of the Crusade and the Dalek Master Plan. And practically every film that needed a witch at around this time. It was almost... I remember sort of going a bit... Because uh, I, you know, I love the idea of Jean Marsh off of Doctor Who being in Doctor Who, but part of me was like, well, she's already been in Doctor Who. We could have had another famous actress and she's done loads of witches. But... Um, and, and of course she'd been a companion, so it's a bit like... I mean, I don't really consider Sarah Kingdom a companion, to be honest. Um, but don't write in. <laughs> um, but it, I suppose it was like a, a regular coming back. Um, but I remember being quite cross that she's higher than Nicholas Courtney in the credits because he's he is a regular. He's the second lead in in, in uh, season eight. So, and then, you know, when, when one of the doctors comes back, when Patrick Trackman comes back, he gets second billing before Little Bryant uh, because he's the doctor. So I figured somebody who's a former companion, for, that's a great shot as well, the sun rising up. And that scream at the end as the lights go down, that's all really nice stuff. Um, although, you know, the cold light of day on videotape is not... That would be so much more atmospheric on film, wouldn't it? Um, the sort of the dawn, you know, the, the dawn. Um, I do like the doctor tidying up the garden. Oh, and I like the way that these two wake up alert, yes. Uh, Anselin and Bambera uh, asleep, uh, resting on each other. Uh, and yeah, and, uh, and the fact that when he wakes them up, they stand alert, I rather like that. Um, but yeah, it would have looked amazing on film, wouldn't it, that, uh, uh, that dawn. But yes, the brig yes, the brigadier. I thought should have done. But a helicopter was big news. I, I, in fact, I remember one of the newspapers at the time going, "Oh, yeah, they've thrown a lot of money at this. He's got a helicopter." Never occurred to me a helicopter would be an expensive thing. Yeah, she's uh, she's great, Dorota Ray, um, as flight lieutenant Lavelle. Uh, she, she's not really a helicopter pilot. Um, yeah, okay, funky music, yeah. Why? I wonder why I was so cross with this at the time. I was just cross. <sighs> I was 15, I've got a 16 year old now, he's cross. No matter how you try to stop them being cross, they get cross with you. I suppose like, and I suppose Doctor Who was a bit, my dad wasn't around, so Doctor Who. My mum was busy. Doctor Who was, I was a bit like my parent. When you get cross with your parent, don't you? And the things it does to try and press you, you go, oh, you get fed up with, what are you trying to do? Trying to, that's rubbish, Dad. Um, but it also makes you feel cosy and comfortable and safe. Doc, Doctor Who is my dad. <laughs> that's a terrible old cliche, isn't it? But it's sort of, um, it's sort of true. Uh, you know, it's, it, it's fulfilled an educational, a, a comforting, uh, a constancy uh, of a role in a role in my life. That's great. <laughs> and it is extraordinary to who wouldn't be allowed a companion that, that was an arsonist, juvenile delinquent who blew things up these days. I don't think. I didn't really think much about it at that time, and I, I didn't like the Nitro 9 cans. They didn't look like deodorant cans to me. Um, they looked more like thermos flasks. It's amazing how, what, what things spoil things for you. Um, a great line, only when I'm drunk, sir. <laughs> I love these two. I want a series with like Lieutenant Lavelle and, and the Brigadier. Um, oh, call me a lion lady. Let's break your nose. Yeah, I like to see that. There's, in fact, because you know we we Lord Robert Holmes is double acts. There's there's there's. 
you know, when you haven't got much money and you've got to fill four episodes, you know, you, you, you tell the story through characters and through character interaction. And I'm enjoying being with all of these characters. Uh, well, yeah, because of course she, she destroys the... Th now, this is directed by Michael Kerrigan, who, at around this time, he, he, he was sort of completing a, a jigsaw puzzle because he and Andrew Morgan had directed a thing called Knights of God. So it seemed quite sensible that with Morgan not directing this series, uh, the other Knights of God director. And Knights of God was something that I rather enjoyed. That had, you know, knights with machine guns. And is a sort of and Patrick Troughton was in it, Gareth Thomas was in it, uh, and, and and John Woodvine. So you know, lots of who type people. Nigel Stock, but it had been sort of delayed, and it got. Uh, um, and I remember when I when I caught it, uh, uh, you know, thoroughly enjoying it. But if I watched something that was on the other side, because it was ITV, that was sort of sci-fi, even though I wasn't one of the houses where the ratings were registered. I felt like I was betraying Doctor Who and I shouldn't be I shouldn't be helping out the competition. So I rather and that stretched for so long. I mean I it took me ages to watch Buffy the Vampire Slayer because I somehow didn't wanna I didn't want to acknowledge that I might like that because that would come at the expense of Doctor Who. It's like you can only like one thing. It's it's a it's a peculiar Well being a Doctor Who fan's quite peculiar. I'm, yes, okay. Um but that sort of loyalty that that um, we have to the show that, that, that I sort of and I you know I videoed this and I videoed this and I was a bit wasn't didn't have much money so I didn't buy as good videotapes as I would have liked to have bought and I remember there was a slight flicker at the top and I remember thinking oh god but what if you know what if something happens is this is the only copy left it's got to be as good quality as possible because again you know you harboured that fantasy that's why you have to record everything to do with Doctor Who because because Doctor had gone missing in the past, and what if yours was the last? I don't know what sort of Armageddon or apocalypse is going to happen, or what sort of or, or, or what sort of miscreants would go around destroying all of Doctor Who, apart from my copies. I did live in the middle of nowhere, so they would have struggled. <laughs> but I, I, I don't know under what circumstances. I thought mine would, but I was. I remember. Oh, I used to ache with worry about those little flickers of videotape. That I, somehow destroyed history. Gosh, it's a minefield liking a thing and being young. And, well, it doesn't actually get easier when you get any old. I still... My heart still fluctuates over unimportant things. Um, you, in, you enjoy... Yeah, you're enjoying... Now, this is, this is neat. I didn't really understand this at the time. I don't like it when baddies fall out with each other. I, find I always get annoyed in 24 when a new baddie comes in and kills the baddie who's been in the previous episodes because they're bored of that baddie and they need a new baddie. It feels like you're doing the hero's job for him if the, if, if the baddies out, turn on each other. But this is really interesting because they're mother and son. I did, as I said, I didn't quite understand this when I was younger. Um, and it seems so obvious now. Um, that's a great shot, but yeah, the idea that he's desecrated the war dead and that they're, you know, that they're, they're on in a, in a civilized place, and then you and you have to, you have to acknowledge that is gives gives nice depth and you know it ties in with that chivalry thing, um, and this is this is rather fun that, uh, that she goes oh all right mate yeah you're you're one of my lot we're not we're not having a we're not having a fight now. Um, but Battle Queen of the Srax, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's quite an introduction. I have to admit, I I wasn't wild about Gene Marsh's performance at the time. I like the fact he does lecture them in archaeology. <laughs> and that's a great shot as well. So it's actually, I'd, I'd, remember, I'd, I'd remember not liking Jean Marsh particularly, finding her a bit arch-witchy, uh, and, 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 and not being wild about Michael Kerrigan's direction, but I, I'm, I'm certainly liking the way he's composed some of his shots, and again, the pace that he gives to it. Um, 
Uh, and I like the smoke. I'm not, I'm not wild about the green light in, in this set as it opens out at the end of the episode, but we're not there yet. But um, Michael Kerrick and Andrew Morgan, because Michael Kerrigan came back and uh, directed for the Sarah Jane Adventures. Amazing. that You know, he's one of those ones that sort of straddled. Nobody really talks about that much. That yeah, he... Um, and then, but then he, he, and he, he's on the DVD for Battlefield. I never saw him interviewed about Sarah Jane, and then he, and then he died. Um, again, relatively young, but, but Andrew Morgan told me that he, he never slept. He had this weird constitution whereby, uh, he, you know, he would, do, he would work all day and then sort of go out and, and carouse and, and, then, and then come back to work seemingly unaffected. Um, so interesting character but I don't know much about him apart from from that and that he directed this one story which is weird to think because he's he's a relative you know he's he's relatively recent in in Doctor Who's history I, the fact that I know yeah this is 31 years ago I still think of this as quite new Doctor Who because it was it was on when I was you know looking back at historical Doctor Who which was old and fusty and black and white this is, now this is um the Knight Commander here is Stefan Schwartz, forgive me if I've pronounced that incorrectly, who directed the episode of The Boys I watched the other night. He has directed loads of massive American television shows. Um, uh, and yet he's playing, you know, a very lowly part in this. He's had an amazing career as a director. Um, but yeah, I was watching The Boys last... Oh, it's The Boys tonight. Sorry, I'm watching... I thought I was... I should be watching The Boys now, and I'm watching Battlefield for you. <laughs> and I'm enjoying almost every minute of it. Um, I think you'd cut to the chase a bit more now. I think you'd, I think you'd be in there. But, but these two have such a great rapport um, that it's very nice. But I, um, I, I'm commandeering. <laughs> I love these commandeers of 2CV. That hadn't occurred to me at the time as being anything... I, I just thought, oh, it's a, you know, it's a bit low budget. It's a bit, but actually, the, the fact that he commandeers a two CV is glorious. That's a, that's the best car he could have commandeered. Um, yeah, I, I don't think the model really works um, un, under the water. Um, yeah, it's a, storytelling's not always clear, but that's making. Video tape, uh, largely videotape, studio bound, multi camera. Uh, this set's actually pretty good. Uh, for some reason, I'm again at the time I wasn't wild about it. I think I might just not have liked the green. I sometimes I, th I think maybe I sometimes think of le green as a bit of a lazy colour with sci fi. Um, uh, oh dear. Um, she has. She's deserved some paint box. Was paint box was huge at the time. This uh, it was like CGI with crayons, <laughs> um, and, and and had been sort of trademarked by the Chronicles of Narnia. That's where it really. And that looks. I mean, that looks like a sort of picture book now. That show. Um, but this was, you know, this was this was it was state of the art. This was uh, these 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 worms. Uh, actually, they look okay. I thought they would look terrible, um, uh, but actually, they look all right. They look okay. Um, that's good because the camera did look like it, it hit him. Um, it's not a dead end. It's a cupboard. You've walked into a cupboard and said, "Doctor, it's a dead end," and then stood there waiting for the door. To, to, um, that's again. That's not Sophie Aldred's fault. That is. The difficulties of staging uh, a, a, a drama on a on a you know set in a multi camera blah de blah de blah especially a deadly set where the glass breaks and the actress nearly dies but uh, you need to watch the DVD documentary for that that's the bit I love that the way it hits him in the face you look it really looks like I've got his teeth then um, um, yeah of course that was very very dangerous to um, to Sophie Aldred there that uh, that scene. But the way she got trapped in the dead end, um, yeah, uh, you, she tried very hard, Sophie Audrey then, but it was, it was the staging of that was tricky. But other things were better. Um, the direction much better than I remembered. 
the I, I didn't mind the old uh, the old uh, green worms, uh, and I love Flight Lieutenant Lavelle. Um, now John chose the fact that the brigadier was back in it, and he did mention his uh, encompassing his joy that the brigadier was back his rapport with Lavelle. So does that mean I'm not allowed that? Um, no, I think I am allowed that because his, his thing was the fact that the Brigadier's in it and the Brigadier back, being back and Nicholas Courtney being Groover. I, 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 I would like to highlight, um, but that means he's not gonna choose it for this and I'm gonna try and, because uh, I've gotta try and, oh stop, I've gotta try and guess course remind myself of the rules of my own podcast i've got to try and guess what uh john will guess and he's not gonna he's not gonna say he's not gonna choose lavelle and the brigadier because that's already part of his answer so left to my own devices i'd have chosen lavelle and the brigadier uh, and her only when i'm drunk i like that um, and actually that's all i've written down but uh in saying that out loud i realized i've got to I've got to choose something else because um, because that's that's not going to work. Uh, okay, so I'm going to choose. It's just a shot. There's lots of lovely bits in that. I'm not struggling, but I really like that bit where the doctor's in focus, and then Anselin comes up behind him and goes, "She is coming." The doctor goes out of focus and it throws focus onto Anselin. Not only because it's a neat shot, but it's actually what it does. Is it? Or it really it really sells the impact of of what's happening and it's the delivery of the line and everything as well. So that that bit I bet he hasn't chosen that, but um, it's because I'd because I'd given my heart to Flight Lieutenant Lavelle and it's just and then I realised it had or she was already cheating on me uh, with John. So what has John chosen for episode uh, two, which I should have had lined up. And I haven't, but uh, I do have a very efficient filing system. Here we go. Hello, John. So my second choice of something that I love about Battlefield is another character, but this time it is a new character. And it is Peter Wormsley, the archaeologist, oh. as played rather marvellously by James Ellis. James Ellis. Um, I think he's the perfect picture of that slightly irritable obsessive, eccentric, um, and you can tell that James Ellis is, you know, he's a proper character actor, and he gives a very nice, nuanced performance, even though he's not given that much to do. Um, the highlight for me is when he's stalling Brigadier Bambera by quoting Tennyson at her, which I think that's a tactic we can all learn from. Um, I think it's a shame that he only really gets to appear in a couple of episodes before he's dispatched by unit, um, evacuated. But I'd like to think that in some alternate universe, Big Finish made a series of uh, Peter Wormsley audio dramas where he gets up to all kinds of archaeological escapades. I'd listen to them. Oh, now you see, I nearly chose the bit where he lectures them in archaeology. Why didn't I choose that? Why didn't I choose quite a big bit instead of one shot? I'm useless at this. I, I, as soon as I choose what I choose and then hear from somebody else, I, I regret it. Life is full of regrets and I conjure my own new regrets on a daily basis. Isn't that life? Conjuring regrets. Which is why I'm trying to do a positive thing. And even that is causing me regrets. Oh, well, um, it's not important. And it's not, I'm pleased that J J James Ellis got a mention because... Uh, he is lovely. He does do it well. He was known to us because he did uh, uh, a series called One by One, which was about a zoo vet that uh, he played an Irish uh, zookeeper called Paddy Riley. But I remember when he was in that, my mum go, oh, well, it's James Ellis, because he was obviously he was in Z cars for years and years and years as Bert Lynch. Uh, it was famously quite often late for rehearsals, uh, Jimmy Ellis, when he was in Z cars. I should be doing all this sort of stuff over the episode. Sorry. Um... So, yeah, I've got no points. Um, <laughs> I, hope there's not, I hope there's not some sort of fine at the end of this podcast because I've, 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 set, up a, I've, I've set up a format whereby it's 
virtually impossible for me to win, especially if I choose such stupid arbitrary things. Um, okay, well, uh, I'm going to watch The Boys now. I'd forgotten it. I'm recording this on a Friday night. Uh, that, that might be well be directed by the Knight Commander, who I've just seen in that, uh, if he's directing this episode as well. Um, but, uh, uh, wow, talk about, you know, reaching for the stars. Good for him. Um, so I'll see you for episode three, which I might watch after the boys. But for now, thanks for watching. Um, and uh, please keep spreading the word and supporting these things. Goodbye.